Hi there. Thanks for tuning in. We pray that this message will touch your life and speak into your heart. Enjoy. Overcome. And so we saw last week how powerful it is for you and me to renew our minds, Romans chapter 12. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this morning with a video clip that I'd like to show you. And, and just to intro this video, I want you to understand, this video shows exactly what happens with believers and what happens with people is that we've got a certain limit, a certain uh, ceiling that gets placed on our lives, a certain limitation that gets placed on our lives. And what happens is we accept it, we agree with it, and then we live like that for the rest of our lives. And I believe that God is wanting to come and He's wanting to come and set some people free because the Bible says when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. Am I right? And so who's the truth? Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And as we spend time with the truth, I believe God is going to set us up. Let's quickly watch this 50-second video clip together. Is it going to work? Uh, for three days. Training fleas. Training fleas. We're going to train some fleas today. Are they going to get it right for us? Oh, there we go. Lord Jesus, I pray. Can I pray for us? Lord, I realize that this, even Billy shared a word with me this morning. This word, huh, it's not from a man. I don't, want, I don't want to speak for myself. And Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you just come and open hearts. Your word says that our hearts are like seed, uh, like a seed bed, like, like soil that needs to receive the word, of, the word of God. And I pray that as the seed of the word goes this morning, that our hearts would be open to receive every single word from the mouth of God. That we'll be sustained by your truth. And Lord, that revelation would break into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I just want to rebuke, number one, any schemes of the enemy. I rebuke, I take captive every thought that will exalt itself above the knowledge of Christ. And I say in Jesus' name, truth and light and love rule in this place by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Last Let's watch this together. With a lid. The fleas are placed inside the jar and the lid is then sealed. They are left undisturbed for three days. Then, when the jar is opened, the fleas will not jump out. In fact, the fleas will never jump higher than the level set by the lid. Their behavior is now set for the rest of their lives. And when these fleas reproduce, their offspring will automatically follow their example. Isn't that amazing? Listen to this. The fleas were conditioned by the environment. They, a lid was placed on them. Watch this. Then what used to be abnormal, because they could jump higher, they could do more, what used to be abnormal became normal. Now, friends, it wasn't just what used to be abnormal became normal for them. What became abnormal became normal for them, but it also became the new normal for their children and their children's children. I'm here to say to you that people get saved. They get born again. They get the Spirit of God inside of them. But sadly, what happens is they don't agree with the truth because they're so conditioned by the way that they grew up. They're so conditioned by how they grew up and how, how school systems work, worked and how their teachers worked with them and how their bosses worked with them and how everything happened to them in life and what they saw on TV and what's been coming into their minds. Guess what happens? That became their new normal. And so it's amazing for me how I see a grandfather battling with stuff, the father battling with stuff, the child bat battling with something, and then their children bat battling with exactly the same thing. It's amazing. Think about your life. I want to ask you, have you thought about your life? Have you thought about your normal? Have you thought about the conditioning on your mind? Friends, three days for those fleas, they end up taking the jar away. Did you see? They took the jar away, and the fleas just kept on going like they were going. Now, you might be sitting here this morning and say, oh, Mark, that's bad. That means there's no hope. I've got amazing hope for you. The amazing truth is 
that you can retrain your mind. You can renew, you can be transformed. It says in Romans 12 verse 2, it says, be transformed, but do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. So what do people do? Is they want to look like the world. They, they want to talk like the world. They want to dress like the world. They want to speak like the world. They want to act like the world. They want to live like the world. Because that's all they know. So conformation, to try and conform, is not what God is about. Now, people come into religion. They, they give their lives to Jesus, but they come into, they come into, then they become religious, and then they try and conform instead of being transformed. How are you transformed? By renewing your mind, putting the truth into your mind. Now listen to this, listen to this. If it, is, if it works with a negative, that you can train your mind negatively, that you can go tick, tick, tick. I mean, you could, use, you could jump like this, but now there's a lid on your thinking. Tick, 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 you can jump like that, right? If it can work in the negative, Billy, it can work in the positive as well. Can you give God praise for that? If it can work, if it can work with the lie, I believe it can work better with the truth. I believe that if, 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 if we can have a certain amount of thinking that we can say, no, 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 but, but, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No, no, no. I, I, I don't have to be a victim. I can be victorious. I don't have to be a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. I don't have to be uh, rejected because I'm accepted by heaven. If I, can, if, I can, if I can agree with the truth, I'm going to start living the truth. I'm going to break out. What, what used to be not normal is going to become my new normal. What used to be foreign becomes my, my lifestyle. Hello? Are you excited? Because I believe that some people are going to break through. Are you ready to break through? Your life is always moving in the, the direction of your most, most, your thoughts. Think about it. You cannot have a positive life, we said last week, with a negative mind. You cannot have a positive life with a negative mind. Now think about this, professional athletes. I've, I've, I've studied some professional athletes. I love documentaries about professional athletes. What I've seen is this, is I've seen that the way they think is so important to the, to, to, to the way they, 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 they're on the court or on the field or on, on, the, on, on the track. They, the way they think is massive for them. Have you seen that? If you think that you're going to lose, what happens? You lose. Let me tell you something about, uh, uh, in marriage. If you think that it's just, I mean, you just think divorce, 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 divorce. Don't be surprised when you get divorced. If you're as a student, just think you're going to fail, you're going to fail, you're going to fail. Don't be surprised if you fail. Let me tell you my story. Can I tell you my story? I was a flea. A lid was placed on my life. I'll tell you my lid. I went to grade one. And in grade one, I was the slowest kid in the class. I was starag. My first report, Justin, had a tortoise on it. And the teacher said, you must just speed up a bit. Yes, my big star. Sorry, Mark. My first report, my grade one report, it was sub A. I was in Namibia. My grade one report had a tortoise on it. I believed that I was stupid. I believe that, I mean, I took longer to build a puzzle. I took longer to read, learn how to read. I took longer to do a lot of stuff. When I was 10, by the age of 10, they realized, listen, there's a serious problem here. And so that I had to learn how to read with a little card because my eyes could not focus on the words. I had a problem with my eyes. And no one knew this. So I just kept on trying. You know, you just try, try, try. But I just kept on doing I mean, and I didn't do badly. It was like I passed everything, and with math and those kind of things that I didn't have to read much, I did really well. But the things I had to read a lot with, I did really ba badly. I struggled, right? Now you're looking at me like, oh, shame, we have got a... Was it my starig a pastorki? Hey, sorry. Now listen. I'll never forget this. I'll never forget that I could never finish an exam. I always had to go back in, in break time to finish the exam in primary school. In high school, they said, sorry, my broer, sorry, I'm from your two We're not going to give you extra time. So when I got to standard nine, grade 11, they sent me to, uh, to, for some tests to see what's the problem, you know, so that I could maybe, because there's a problem here. Hello? No one could pick up that it was actually just a reading disability. 
because I mean, I, w- I, d- I wasn't at school in 2019. I was at school in 19 foot sec. <laughs> so what happened was, friends, I honestly, listen to me. I started believing that I was dumb. I was convinced I am so stupid. I was convinced that if I read something, I'm not going to remember it because I can't remember it. My mind was so powerful that it forced me to believe that I am substandard. So guess what happens? In my matric year, they give me 45 minutes every single exam because of the test they did on me. They said, clearly there's a problem. 45 minutes extra for every exam. So thank the Lord I could pass matric. Guys, I passed matric, eh? Okay? <laughs> okay, thank you for that. I'm, I mean, it's amazing. Now I'm talking to you and the doctors and the lawyers are listening to me. Anyway, just <laughs> listen to this. Then I get tests back. I go and I study theology. And I'm doing Old Testament 1, New Testament 1. And as I'm busy studying, I am studying my heart out for Old Testament 1. Still believing that I've got to work seven times harder than the normal person because I can't remember the stuff that I read. So then the tests come back. I went to, I did some more tests and they looked at my intellect and they tried to see what is my intellectual ability. And my wife was with me. I got this report back. (laughs) The report back said that my intellectual ability is superior. I'm in the top 10% of the country. I studied two weeks for Old Testament, and I got like 62. I studied a day and a half for New Testament, and I got a distinction for New Testament. I'll tell you what happened. I studied Old Testament with the old thinking, I'm stupid. I studied New Testament with the new thinking, I'm superior. I'm telling you today that the problem with most people is they put a limitation on what God can do in their life. They put a limitation on what God can say over their lives. They put a limitation. You, some people are sitting in this room and you are still condemned. You are still, you are, you are still rejecting yourself. You're still speaking down at yourself. Why? Because you're not accepting the truth. Why aren't you accepting the truth? Because you don't believe you're worth it. And if you're far from God here today and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, I'm here to say to you that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, there's no reason why God would not love you. You say to me, but Mark, you don't know what I did. God says, he knows exactly what you did. And he loves you anyway. And and that's why he died on the cross for you. Many people tell me, no, Mark, you know, I must first get my life right and then I'll see you at church. I'm like, oh, it's like saying I must first get clean before I get a bath. I'm at the back door this week. I'm at the back door. Now, we have a back door that's got a latch on. And when I went out for a run, I closed the back door thinking the latch was on. So I come back from the run, and John Mark is at house at the house. Marie's not there, the other two kids, only John Mark. And as I get to the back door, I'm convinced that the back door is locked. So guess what I do? I knock on the back door. Ta, 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 ta. John Mark! Ta, 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 ta. Come and help me. And then he's like, I'm coming. Da, 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 da. I'm knocking on the door, going crazy. Man, I'm now sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know what happens? He comes to the door, opens it. He says, Daddy, it wasn't locked. God spoke to me. He said, There's things in the kingdom that I've already unlocked for you. There's things I already bought for you. There's things I already paid for. And you knocking on the door, but it's unlocked. But because of your thinking, Davy, because you think it's locked, you reject yourself. You deny yourself the blessing. Hello? So I would like to talk to you today about retraining your mind. How do you train your mind? Would you like to know how to train your mind? How to get the truth into your life? Last week, if you weren't here last week, I want to encourage you, go and download it, watch it on Facebook, even get the 505 one Tom shared amazing just about uh, the mind and the power of, the, of that. But remember, we, lo- we spoke last week that there's these neural paths in our brain, these default settings that if someone looks at me funny, I think this. If, if I get to work and someone's a little bit quiet, then I think it's that. If I get home and my wife is like washing the dishes, I'm like, ooh, 
Ooh. You know what I'm saying? There's these certain neural paths that are in our brain, and what we need to do is we need to identify them, and we need to intentionally make new paths. There's lies that we believe. There's lies that our parents believe. There's lies that our grandparents believe. There's lies that our culture believes. Can I talk culture? And you're conforming to that culture instead of being transformed by being renewed in your mind. Amen? Watch this. Einstein said, insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. Where do our deeds come from? Our deeds come from our thinking. What you think is what you do. So I would say this. Insanity is thinking the same things over and over again and expecting different results. Philippians 4 verse 8 is the key scripture for this week, and this is how you train your mind. Can I show you how to train your mind? Watch this, verse 8, Philippians 4. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, I love how he speaks. He's like, brothers and sisters, watch this. One final thing. He's like, this is big. This is a big thing. Fix your thoughts. Can you say fix your thoughts? I love that. It, it makes you think of Colossians 3 where it says, set your mind on things that are above. It's fix your thoughts, focus your thoughts, fix your thoughts. You need, you're the boss of your thoughts. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Can you say true? Wow. You know what I learned? If I want to train my mind, I need, to, I need to look for the things that are true and I need to fix my thoughts on what is true. I need to fix my thoughts, listen to this, on what is honorable. Most people say to me, but Mark, I'm struggling to live an honorable life. You know why? You're struggling to think honorable thoughts. He says, and fix your thoughts on what is right and what is pure. Friends, if you want to live a righteous life, fix your thoughts on what is right. He says, fix your thoughts on what is pure. Amazing. I'm asking this. Is that, isn't it amazing how we, at the default setting in our lives can often be impure thoughts? You know, thoughts of, of unforgiveness, thoughts of sometimes sexual impurity, thinking, sometimes lies come into your mind. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm oh, sorry, none of you struggle with this. But I'm going to the Philippines. I'll speak to them. I'm sure they, they've got this one. Fix your thoughts on what is pure. No, I love this. Because you know what, what, we, what we could have done? is Paul could have written this to the church in Philippi. He could have said, guys, please, take your mind off what is unpure. Take your mind off what is not right. Take your mind off what is a lie. He's, he's not doing that. Because I've learned that you do not get a lie out by, by stopping to focus on the lie. You get a lie out by focusing on the truth. A lie needs to be replaced with the truth. Do you see that? What he's doing is he's saying, let me tell you what to fill your mind with because you are the boss of your mind because what you fill your mind with is what you fill your life with. I've seen this with people. Have you seen how many trees and how many lamp poles people have crashed into? You know why? The car loses control. And then they think, don't eat the tree. Don't eat the tree. Don't eat the tree. <laughs> then they eat the tree. You know what I'm talking about? Why are they eating the tree? That's all they thought of. If you're thinking in your life the whole time, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, you know what you're going to do? You're going to do that. What you focus your mind on is why, where you will end up being. What you fix your mind on is where you're going to be. That's why Paul's writing is saying, fix your mind. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Fix your thought on what is right. Fix your thoughts on what is pure. Fix your thought on what is lovely. Fix your thoughts on what is honorable. He's saying, he's saying fix your thoughts on what is admirable. You know, if I think of my mind, you know we need to do an audit of our minds. When he's saying, is my mind thinking at things that can, will someone, is my mind thinking on things that are admirable? Hello, can you smile at me? Or are you thinking now? You. you know what I learned? If I keep on telling myself, don't be negative, don't be negative, don't be negative, don't be negative. 
Oh, don't be negative. Don't be negative about the government. Don't be negative about your mother. Don't be negative about your father. Don't be negative about your wife and your kids and your school. Don't be negative. What are you going to do? You're going to see more potholes than ever. Have you checked this? Can I just say something? I've seen this. I drove a Nissan Qashqai while I was in Den- Denmark. And I thought, hey, this is quite a nice car. Maybe one day I must buy a car like this. I never saw the, the cars. I never saw them. You won't believe. I, all I can see now is Qashqai. <laughs> I'm telling you, look at a picture of a BMW X5 or X6 or X4. You never saw the car beforehand. Now you focus. Look. Did everyone now all of a sudden buy BMWs? <laughs> Have you checked that? Think about it. The more negative you think, the more negative you see. And the more negative you see, the more negative you become. Hello? He says, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Isn't that awesome? If all you're thinking is, I can't trust these people, I can't trust these people, you know what? They're going to prove to you you can't trust them. If all you can think about, man, I'm going to just, I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. You know what? You're going to live like that. So can I say, where does it start? Where do we start with training our minds? We go to Philippians chapter 4. We say, we set the right things in our minds. How do we set the right things in our minds? I believe it happens with the word and with prayer. I think we underestimate the power of prayer. We underestimate the power of prayer. You know why? Because we think that prayer is something we do when there's a problem. Prayer is not something you do when there's a problem. Prayer is a lifestyle we live because we're engaging, we're communing, we're connecting with our Father in heaven by His Spirit every single day as much as we possibly can. And He's always with us. Prayer is who we are. This is what I do. I've learned this. That if I'm, if I'm concerned about something, if I'm stressing about something, you know what I'm doing? It's probably, I'm probably not praying about it. I believe it starts with prayer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16. It's our key scripture for the year. Watch this key scripture. It's, uh, Tom referenced it last week, uh, Sunday night. It was brilliant. Listen to this. Verse 16. Rejoice always. You want to train your mind? Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. How do I think of things that are true? How do I think of things that are right? You know what's amazing? In the presence of Jesus, I am, I'm, I'm not going to think like, yo, Jesus, I hate that oak. Hey, God, I just want to tell you, please kill that oak. No, you know what? When I think it, the Holy Spirit ministers to me, and truth comes into my mind. It's like, no, that's not my heart. Because God's heart and my heart starts beating together. I start aligning with the heart of God. Amen? It says, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. I believe that the most basic part of training our mind is learning on how to focus on what we focus on. Amen? I've learned this in prayer, that my mind drifts. Anyone clever like it better than me? You know, I, I told you I'm the Mark Mark Finnegar. That was my nickname at school. Mark Mark Finnegar. Mark, speed up, please. That was my nickname. I should have told them when I was finished with school, hey, I'm superior, my brother. Anyway, <laughs> just joking. <laughs> Listen to this. Friends, when, I, when my mind drifts, you know what I do? I do one of two things. I either start praying through the Psalms or I pray through some of Paul's shorter letters, Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, Galatians. I pray through the scriptures if my mind drifts in my prayer or I write my prayers down or what I do is I find a song that is biblical, a worship song that is biblical, and I pray with the song. I just gave you now, I just gave you a million rand. If you can just get those three things. Is that right? Lord, help us. So can I give you four things on training your mind? Four things. Are you ready? Buckle up your seatbelts. It's coming. Is that okay? What flows from prayer in the word. These four, four things flow from prayer in the word. The first thing is I'd like to go to David and Goliath. Now you might say, oh, but Mark, we know David and Goliath, man. David was a little shepherd boy and he killed Goliath. He killed the giant. I'm here to say to you, you've got giants in your life. 
And some of the biggest giants in your life are right here in your head. And if you want to defeat those giants, you need to watch what this guy did. How did David defeat the giant in front of him? The first thing I believe that he did is David had a different attitude. Train your mind by addressing your attitude. And the attitude for me starts with the attitude of Christ. Because it says in Philippians 4, we need to have, Philippians 2, we need to have the attitude of Christ. Christ's attitude was one of humility. Christ's attitude was one of laying down himself. Christ's attitude was one, was, was one of saying, I don't want to make myself great. I want to lay down my life. Christ had a different attitude. Lord, as I'm, as I'm speaking about these four points, I want to pray that nothing will distract any one of us from this truth. This is going to set people free. Your truth. I pray, Lord, that you'll come by your spirit and make these points alive to us. In Jesus' name, amen. What I've learned is, friends, in life, approach is very powerful. The way I approach a problem sets the tone for everything. The way I approach my marriage sets the tone in my marriage. The way I approach my workplace, the way I approach my relationship with God, Approach is huge. One man once said, he says, things don't go wrong, they start wrong. If you study 1 Samuel chapter 17, you see that the Israelites were standing in this valley and, and Goliath came out every morning and he came out every night for 40 days. So 80 times, they are hearing a lie being shouted at them. Someone is shouting a lie out at them, and for, eight, for 40 days, they're hearing the lies. They're hearing, oh, we're so bad, oh, we are, and they're shaking in their shoes. And they are just bombarding their minds with a lie, and their attitude is one of, we are defeated. Their attitude is one of, we don't have hope. Their attitude is one of, let's just give up. That's their attitude. David has a different attitude. He comes there, he's like, well, tell me, what do I get? What does the man get that sorts this guy out? What, 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 what? He's got a different attitude. David has a different attitude. I've learned attitude is huge in your life. I've learned this. I do not, friends, it's a statistical fact. 65% of people that lose their jobs, 65% of people that lose their jobs, lose their jobs because of attitude, not incompetence, but because of attitude. A wise man once said this. He said that attitude is more important than most things in life. He said this, it's more important than education. Attitude is more important than financial success. Attitude is more important than achievements. Attitude is massive in your life. I'm asking you, what is your attitude? I've I've seen that. I can come home and my attitude can be like, oh. Ask my poor kids, they're sitting here. My attitude can be like, hey, clean up this place. What's going on here, man? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, man. Where's your room? Make your bed. Ask them. Now, I mean, I can do exactly the same thing with a different attitude. What's your attitude? Any of this powerful. What is your attitude like in life? I've learned this. If you want to train your, train your mind, address your attitude. Your attitude, I believe, affects every part of your life. Some people, friends, you will, this country will be different for you if you change your attitude towards this country. I'm, I can tell you now, you can, you can have a different marriage tomorrow morning if your attitude, if you change your attitude towards your spouse. Today. You can, you're, you can have a different job tomorrow morning if you change your attitude towards that job. You want to change your life? Change your attitude. Amen? The second thing I want to talk to you about is this is what David did. David preached to himself. I I don't know if you're making notes. I don't know if it's on the screen. If you want to train your mind, learn how to preach to yourself. Martin Lloyd-Jones said the following. He says, have you realized that most unhappiness in life is due to the fact that we are listening to ourselves instead of talking to ourselves? Most unhappiness in your life comes because you listen to yourself and you don't talk to yourself.
I'm begging you. I'm asking you from my heart. Learn how to preach to yourself. I'm, 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 I'm crying out to God. I'm saying, God, teach this church to preach to ourselves. Friends, the person that needs the message preached to themselves the most is me. I need to preach. I need to preach to myself more than I preach to anyone on the planet. Most people want to preach to everyone and tell them, you better change, you better get this right, you better raise your kids better, you better study harder, you must do this more. Stop it. Preach to yourself. And overflow can bless others. Can you give him praise for that? You know, David was one man that preached to himself. Psalm 103, Psalm 103, we see how David speaks to himself. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. What is he doing? He's preaching to himself. He says this, soul, you better bless the Lord, buddy. Come, come, come now. Listen to what he says. He says, and forget not all his benefits, who heals all your diseases and cleanses all your iniquities. David is busy preaching to himself. He would preach to himself to say, you better give thanks to God right now. When last did you preach to yourself? I'm going to ask you, can I give you homework by the grace of God? Write out a sermon that you need to preach to yourself in this season of your life. Can you go before Jesus, spend time with Jesus, get two or three scriptures and write out a sermon to myself? And every single day, preach that sermon to yourself till you believe it. Hello? I love this. He preaches to himself. I love this. He gets onto the battlefield and what does he do? He preaches to himself. He preaches the goodness of God to himself. He preaches to himself. This guy is a man that preaches to himself. The third thing I want to share is feed your faith and starve your doubts. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. This is powerful because faith and thoughts work together. I've seen this. I've seen you're never going to change your thoughts if you don't change your belief. If you don't believe right, you're never going to think right. That's why renewing the mind cannot come from emptying the mind, or renewing the mind cannot come from watching someone else or, or being secondhand, just saying, no, what it worked for them, going to work for me. That doesn't mean renewing the mind. Renewing the mind means I need to get what I believe here to become a reality here. I want to ask two guys just to come to the front. Joshua, is that right? Joshua and Dust, if you don't mind. Josh, you can stand this side, please. Listen to this, friends. If you're going to agree, what you agree with is what you're going to become. Is that okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? So what you agree with is what you become. If I agree with a lie, uh, Josh is going to be the lie today, Dustin's the truth. If I agree with a lie, what, is, what becomes my reality? Doubt. If I believe, agree with the truth, what becomes my reality? Faith. Do you see this? I need to feed my faith, starve my doubt. Too many people, remember what I said earlier, you're listening to yourself more than what you're preaching to yourself. Doubt comes right here. Oh, we're going into a recession. Oh, you know what? We're never going to, what if we get into a car accident? What if they kept kidnap me in the Philippines? Oh, la, 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 la. You know what I'm talking about? Feeding my doubts because I'm thinking, I'm listening to the lies. I'm here to say to you, one man once said, he said this, I think it was Kenneth Hagin. He said, he said, bad thoughts are going to come. Doubts and lies and fears are going to come. He said, it's like this. You cannot, he says, I cannot stop birds from flying over my head. But I can stop them from making a nest in my hair. I think you need to give God praise for that. That's a powerful, powerful reality. I'm asking you, are you allowing the doubts to make a nest in your hair? Ken Grenfell spoke so powerfully. He said this. Every matter needs to be established by two or three witnesses, right? So if you've got two witnesses, it's established. So what does the devil want? The enemy wants this. He wants you to witness to the lie. He wants you to agree with the lie. So if he's the devil, sorry, buddy. Give me a, give me a, devil. There we go. That's what I want. <laughs> Maybe I can just, okay, we're going to put the devil here. Right. I'm telling you today, the devil what he wants is he wants agreement. When he came to Adam and Eve, what did he look for? Agreement. 
If you understood the power of agreement, you would revisit your thoughts and you would preach to yourself more often. Because agreement establishes stuff in your life. And if you agree with it, it becomes who you are. I wish you could get this. Um, friends, are you quiet because you're shocked or are you quiet because you're not listening? Are you processing? I mean, I mean honestly, this is big. I think I've, I've been preaching now for 20 years, 22 years. I can't remember when last I struggled with the message as much as I did for this week. Because I felt in God that something is going to just pe penetrate hearts this morning in a fresh way. If you agree with the lie, you're a witness Two witnesses, that becomes your reality. Yeah. In this church, when we count the money, we always have two people signing. Tomorrow morning when they come and open it, there's two different locks. We do things above reproach. Why? Because we want witnesses. No one can ever be alone with the money. Never. There has to be witness. Why? If there's a witness, it gets established. Yes. Listen to this. If I witness with the lie, with the doubt, with the fear, it becomes who I am. If I witness with the truth. I'm asking you today, by the grace of God, you need to ask yourself, is this the truth or is this the lie? And make sure that you witness with the truth. Because if you witness with the truth, it's established. It's established. Let's give these guys a hand. Bless you guys. Now, how do I witness with the truth? Romans 10, 17 says this, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what I've learned is, I've learned that I've got to confess the truth because often I don't know the truth. And if I don't know the truth, I, the truth can't set me free. So what happens, faith comes when I hear the truth. That's why I believe in preaching to myself. That's why I sometimes believe in reading the Bible out loud. That's why I believe in praying the Bible. That's why I listen to the Bible in audio on you, you version. The, the more I hear the truth, the more I believe the truth. The more I believe the truth, the more I think the truth. The more I think the truth, the more I love the truth. You've got to do something about your belief system. I can sit here today and we can have a mind seminar. If you do not change your heart, belief. Mind seminar will do you nothing. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what you confess, you will possess. And if you're speaking lies, and you're speaking negativity, and you're speaking that you are a victim, and you're speaking failure, and you're speaking that you are dumb, and you are stupid, and there's no hope and no future for you, if you're speaking that rubbish, you're agreeing, with, you're witnessing with the lie, you're gonna live the lie. I'm here to say that there's people that have lost businesses, there's people that have lost careers, there's people that have lost marriages, there's people that have lost relationships, there's people that have backslid from God because they witnessed with the lie instead of witnessing with the truth. Though David, do you know what David does? He speaks words of faith. He comes to Saul, Saul says to him, what's gonna happen? So he says to this to Saul, he says, the same God, listen to this friends, the same God, that gave me victory over the lions and the bears. It's the same God that's gonna give me victory over this uncircumcised Philistine. He looks at that Philistine, the Philistine says to him, who do you think you are to come and face me? Intimidation, that's the devil's major trick with us. What does he say? He says, you come against me with the sword and the spear. I come against you in the name of the Lord most God. I, I'm telling you right now, I'm coming in the power of, the, of, of heaven. I'm asking you, how do you approach and what do you say when you're thinking challenges. Hello? We defeat the lie by speaking the truth. I've learned this, is that killing lies is voice activated. D David, David defeated Goliath before he picked up the five stones. You know when David defeated Goliath? When he was speaking to his brothers and he said, what does the king, what will the king give us? He already defeated him there. And then he just spoke it and he took hold of it. The fourth and the last one. Are you ready for this one? Biblical meditation. I can preach the whole day on biblical meditation. Most people are so anti-meditation. David was a meditator. He was a meditation expert. 
Now, most people are like, oh, no, Mark, I don't want nya, 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 nya. I'm here to say to you that the Eastern religions, they have stolen meditation from God's people. And their approach of meditation is not biblical meditation. Their approach for meditation is empty your mind. Our approach to meditation is fill your mind with truth. I'm amazed at how few Christians know how to meditate. You know, I like running. I spoke to Darren yesterday, he cycles. You know, my running time is my meditation time. I spend time in the morning, ask my, my wife and my kids, in my, my study alone, I'm meditating. During the day, I take times out of the day, I'm meditating. You know what I meditate on? I meditate on the truth. I meditate, God, you are good. You are faithful. God, you never leave me nor forsake me. God, you are good. You are strong. You are mighty in battle. God, you are good. You are great. You are glorious. God, thank you that you forgave me. Thank you that I'm your son. Oh, I'm your son. God, I'm your son. Thank you that you're my father. Lord, I'm meditating on who you are. Watch this. Watch this. There was this one man, young man, he could quote the whole New Testament verbatim. He had a photographic memory. And he was at a Bible college and he was so proud of himself because they would say to him, quote the book of Romans. And then he would quote it from the start to the end. And he would be like, hey, I'm the man. And the, the, the old, older gentleman, a more experienced believer, called him aside, said to him, it's one thing to quote the Bible. It's another thing to meditate on the Bible. He said, meditate, what's meditate? I can memorize, but I don't meditate. Memorizing is the start. Meditation is what God wants us to do. And he said, Lord, show me, teach me meditation. So he walked along this road and he, he bumped into cows. And he thought, hey, these cows are in my way. And the cows were all over the path. And the Holy Spirit said to him, wait, watch the cows. And he checked this one cow, you know, with that long tongue. And the cow takes some grass and the cow. And the cow swallows it. And the Lord, he says, okay, is it done? The Lord says, wait, 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 wait. And a few minutes later. You're never going to forget this. Watch this. The Lord said to him, that's meditation. You come to my word. Swallow it. Okay, later during the day. Tomorrow morning. Meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. It says in Psalm 119 verse 15, I meditate on your precepts and I consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. I'm here to say to you, if you want to train your mind, learn how to meditate on God's word. Not just memorize, meditate. Think it, speak it, revisit it, write it down. Think it, speak it, revisit it, write it down. Make it part of your life. Sing it. I'm telling you, you know what I love? I love singing God's word. I also want to make my own songs. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 said the following. Sorry, time is ticking. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of the sinners or uh, sit in the company of mockers. Isn't that amazing? David, David had the opportunity to conform to Goliath's way of fighting or he could conform to Saul's armor. I'm here to say to you, if you want to train your mind, you cannot try to become like someone else. Do not, friends, training your mind does not come from Instagram or Twitter or f Facebook or wherever. I don't know, ladies, die Pinterest and die alle goeders. Training your mind, you know what people do? They look at others and they say, I must be like them. See, if I'm like them, then I'm going to have a happy life. If I'm just like so-and-so, then I'm going to be able to do great. If I'm just like so-and-so, then I'm going to have the, the life I want. Friends, that's their life. 
It's their armor. Do not settle for someone else's armor and do not fight someone else's battle. Fight your own battle. Amen? Watch what he does. Verse two, but who's the light? Can you say the light? His delight is in the law of the Lord and who, on, who, who, and who meditates on his law day and night. He meditates on God's law, God's word day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the river. His, trees, his leaves never falters and whatever he does prospers. Amen? Psalm 143. So there's a double blessing. Can I give you the double blessing? The number one thing is meditate on God's word. The second meditation, can I give you the double punch? Are you ready for it? The double punch is, boom, he says, meditate on his works. Most people think it's only meditate on his word. I'm here to say also meditate on his works. Watch this. I meditate, verse 43, verse verse 5 of Psalm 143. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. You know what David does? David does this. He says, the same God. He says this, the same God that gave me victory over lions and bears. I ran after that lion, I pulled it, I killed it, I snatched that sheep from that lion's mouth. He says, the same God God, that gave me victory over that lion will give me victory over this uncircumcised Philistine. Can I say this to you? There's people in this room, you're fighting battles right now. You need to do two things, meditate on God's word, and you need to meditate on God's works. What are his works? Think back at your life, at some of the testimonies and the breakthroughs and the answered prayers. Think back. Now you say, but Mark, I'm in a financial problem and I only have a marriage testimony. Draw from the marriage testimony. The same God that can give me victory in my marriage is the same God that can give me victory over my finances. The same God that saved my sister-in-law is the same God that can save this child of mine. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. David had a testimony. He had a reference. He had the works of God behind him. I'm asking you, are you remembering God's works in your life? I remember this. This building. This building. There were times in this building that I remember I was defeated. And then I just looked at God's faithfulness. And I remembered God's promise because God had a promise over us and his word to us. And secondly, his works in our lives. And that's how he built the building. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you've enjoyed this message, then make sure to like our page and subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on what's happening here at City on a Hill. See you next week.